two dumb motherfuckers who uh, don't know enough to come in out of the rain. Yes, J and B, actually. J here, bartender. B, uh, I am your editor. Yeah, we wanted to welcome you to the, the nature of reality. Yeah, yeah, this episode of this TV show, as you're seeing on the screen right now, uh, through, through his editorial means. So yeah. let's go with that. Nature yeah. of reality, yeah. take one. You guys gonna watch this one? Yeah, yeah, sure. You guys gonna watch this one? So for this episode, you will need the following things in order to make drinks with us. Now, you can only do this if you're over 21 in the state of Indiana and in most of the, the rest of the United States. But if you're over 21, then you'll want a spoon. Okay, now, as we learned last episode, you always want a blender. Okay? Then you'll need some, uh, some triple sec. We've got a plastic bottle here so that in case we drop it, we don't have any kind of problems. Um, Kahlua. You'll want some Kahlua to, for, for your drinking pleasure. Um, some cognac, uh, just a little bit will do you, um, and uh, some vanilla ice cream. This is the special ingredient that makes it all happen. So we'll get back to you on this later, but gather these things together for later. So here we are sitting here in the rain yeah. in, in uh, this undisclosed location here in Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah, yeah. Whose idea was this, I want to know? Um, it was his, actually, because, because um, you know, we're, we're bringing you reality, and the fact is that it's raining outside. Now... Admittedly, normally we don't actually live our lives outside. We, we do have a, a house and a, and a roof. But we thought that it was important to prove to you that we're not afraid of confronting reality when it's there for us. And we wanted to videotape outside, and here we are outside videotaping. So there you have it, reality yeah. itself. Wake up and smell the coffee. Yes, or, or sniff the, the rain. Hey, look, look what it says right there. Oh I can't believe it. Oh, my God. Oh my God. So there's a problem that we've been encountering here on J and B on the Rocks. Um, I went out the other day and was in public, and this guy came up to me and said, "Hey, B." Well, no, I'm not B. Now I'm J. This is the nature of reality. I'm J. Okay. Yeah. yeah. As unpleasant as, as it is, we wanted you to gaze upon us thoughtfully and remember who's who here, because um, it, we're really, in many ways, very different people. I'm B, you see, and my role here on this TV show is entirely different from Jay's. I edit this TV show, which means that I, you know, go in with the videotapes to the, the editing machines and decks and, and splice them together, more or less, and, and all kinds of stuff. And I am Jay, and I'm kind of like the bartender resident sot, okay? I just kind of get drunk and, uh, and host this television program along with B. So actually, we really do get a lot of mail from all kinds of different people here, and we wanted to share with you this little letter that uh, somebody somebody sent to us. So, you ready for that? Um, yeah, yeah, watch this. Urgent, it says. J and B on the Rocks, from Earl Cyrus. Let's see what old Earl has to say. Better get it out of there quick. Dear J and B, I have this terrible rash between my legs. Could you please recommend a mixed drink to relieve the irritation? Sincerely, Earl. P.S. Do you think calamine lotion would help? Well, no, actually, I've heard that calamine lotion isn't very good for it. What you should do is mix a drink. Uh, well, actually, we'll show you how to do that right now. So this drink that we're going to be making for this fellow is called a crotch cooler. Um, this is our special medicine, medicinal brandy type thing. Um, except it didn't have any brandy in it. For in case you have a crotch itch like this guy, um, so you'll want to add about an ounce of cognac to your little uh, uh, blender thing here. Your little blender thing here. Um, then go ahead and add about a half an ounce of triple sec. Um, that was a little too much, but we're making a big drink. Ugh! There we go. We're also going to add some Kahlua here um, and. Uh, You'll want to add about an ounce of that too, and then last but not least, you'll add about two ounces or, or two big spoonfuls. How's that? Two big spoonfuls of vanilla ice cream. Then we're gonna go put this on the blender bottom and blend it. So it's a blended. And now all you got to do is pour... Oh, you should have had a glass also. I guess I didn't warn you about that. But that, like a blender, you'll always need on J&B on the Rocks. You'll always need a glass. So here's to that. 
My crotch feels much better already. Even though is this an ad or is this real? Ad, real, whatever. We've had cable for months, and I still can't tell the difference. So one thing about the nature of reality is that you cannot trust the government. We are not afraid to say that. Yes, and uh, and if you think that that's untrue, then uh, then you better take a look at this next stuff that we're going to show you. This is this is a, a a video or clips from a video called Waco: The Big Lie. It was done by Linda Thompson of the uh, American Justice Federation or something like that up yeah. in Indianapolis. Yeah. It will truly blow your mind. It blew ours, but we wanted to remind you, of course, as with all things in reality, man, you've got to take this with a grain of salt. Yeah. Just like sure. you should have taken all the uh, news Bullshit in the major read, media yeah. about Waco with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah. So get out your salt shaker and take a look at this. What you are about to see is the first film footage of the initial raid as it was provided to all the network television feeds. This film was heavily edited by someone before it was distributed across the networks. It contains obvious glitches where film has been cut out. But even this editing wasn't enough to remove the truth. Watch closely. Agents are in position behind cars, shooting at the front of the house, as two teams of four agents climb ladders on the side of the house to the roof. Notice that no one is shooting at these agents as they climb the ladders. Several of these agents are carrying fully automatic rifles. The agent at the top right side just managed to shoot himself in the leg. Did you see it? We'll watch that again. The 9mm pistols carried by the ATF have no safety protection on them. As the agent climbs the ladder, he reaches for his gun in the holster. It discharges, wounding him in the leg and causing him to slip. Yeah, hey, let's see yeah. if Jane B on the rocks is on. Yeah. Hey, hey. Uh, well, mm. I'm thoroughly wet now. Mm. I can mix a drink. Next, we see three of the four agents on the roof breaking into the window. Let's watch this part again. No one is shooting at these agents. The shooting you were hearing is from the agents on the ground in front of the house. After these agents get through the window and into the room, you will briefly see the fourth agent on the roof, followed by one of those badly edited cuts in the film. The film picks up with the fourth agent tossing something into the room. It makes no sense for him to be throwing anything at all into a room where the three ATF agents have just gone, unless he intends to injure his own men. He also fires a machine gun into the room, twice without looking. We'll watch it at normal speed, then slow it down. Now let's watch it in slow motion. Here he tosses something and withdraws his hand from the window. Next, without looking, he fires a burst from his machine gun into the room. Someone begins shooting from inside and bullet holes appear in the wall. In the midst of this gunfire, three holes appear at the same time. The agent fires his machine gun into the room a second time. He's then hit by a round. The bullet strikes him in his helmet on the back side of his head. He falls to the roof and grabs his head. 
This agent is not hurt, and he later makes it safely down the ladder. This is Christy Paxson. She Hello. she is married to B, and this is Kelly. Now Kelly's our other roommate. Okay. Now now, you know we're talking about reality here, and and these people actually live with us. They're not just actors. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna make some homemade play-doh. But now this recipe, what I want to do is I want to half this recipe because I want. Now this is gonna be very difficult because this is gonna require math. So I might need a little help from my colleagues. Okay, so we're gonna need a half a cup of salt, so that's a quarter cup of salt. Am I right about that? Okay. Now, half a cup of flour. Two teaspoons cream of tartar. Yeah. Okay, that would be one. Now, if you don't have any tartar on hand, what you can do is you can just take it off your teeth, okay? And that's kinda, you know, add a it's little great. milk, and it's, yeah, you have to scrape, and it's cream of tartar. Wow, just there a one big chunk like that. Yeah. That was the dry. First you mix the dry ingredients. Now we're ready for the wet ingredients. I need half a cup of water. One tablespoon of oil. Now this is what is half of one tablespoon. When are we going to convert, everybody? When are we going to convert to metric? I mean, it was said 20 years ago that by God, you know, we're just going to be a metric and we have it. So I just want to know when the U.S. is going to take the, the big plunge. Did you know 90% of the world uses the metric system? So I'm going to so put green, green in because it's my favorite color. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is, this is for our Irish brothers and sisters out there. Mix it up. That's right, we're mixing up all the colors. This is a little... Now, you want to cook this stuff over low heat until rubbery. Rubbery? Yeah, that's right, rubbery. Now, be careful, because this stuff does get hot. Well, I hope this doesn't fail. Around here, that looks like rubber. Is it getting rubbery, Ms. Paxson? I'd pronounce this as distinctly rubbery. Now you have your finished Clado product, and uh, you can do all sorts of funny things and amaze your friends. Look, Mom, help! I have a tumor. Ah! The first woman with an infected testy. Ah! You guys, I'm gonna turn it off. God damn it! So a lot of people ask, like, funny questions of us, like, uh, do you guys really get drunk every day? Yeah. And shit like that? Well, um, it's kind of ironic, actually. Now that we're dealing with reality here, we should we should out ourselves about alcohol. Yeah, we enjoy a, a drink every now and then. Yeah, yeah, especially when we're on TV. Um, it just kind of has become a, a little thing that we do. Yeah. And, and, and in moderation, we think that's a good thing. We've been known to get a drunk occasionally. And, you know, that's not such a, a bad thing either. We are normal people believe it yeah, or not yeah we're not alcoholics we honestly that's not just denial it's it's true we uh i do, don't usually drink even um I except to when we're doing this tv show but i do it because i'm committed to you the whole yeah. viewer cold boot to the brain to the brain a cold boot a cold cold boot to the brain cold boot to the brain to the brain a cold boot a cold cold boot to the brain Cold, cold boot to the brain. Say, wake up, Ace. Did you think you could take up space on the planet and take it for granted? You don't give a damn. Might as well shit can it, man. Wake up. Smell it. Don't buy it. Sell it. Yell, Yell it from the mountaintop to the valley. Don't dilly, don't dally, don't chilly when you shally. You're silly if you really think the world's gonna wait for you. Make your bacon and serve it on a plate for you. There's a few who get lucky that, that way. way. But today I say you need a cold, cold boot to the brain, to the brain, a cold boot. A cold, cold boot to the brain. Cold boot to the brain, to the brain, a cold boot. A cold, cold boot to the brain. Cold boot to the brain, to the brain, a cold boot. A cold, cold boot to the brain. The following footage proves beyond any doubt that the tanks intentionally set the house on fire. It proves that the Branch Davidians were murdered. Watch carefully as the tank backs out of the house. You can see that this tank has a gas jet on the front that shoots fire. You can also see the fire quite plainly. 
The tank goes into the house twice, and each time as it backs out, the fire at the gas jets is plainly visible. The fire takes less than an hour to burn down the entire center. In one final crude and insensitive display, the ATF raised its flag in victory over the ruins of Mount Carmel before the day was over. One voice was heard that day telling the truth. Brad Branch, a Branch Davidian, who had left the Mount Carmel Center before the day of the fire. Now they're destroying, now they're finishing off the job right now. They're destroying the crime scene. America, this is the biggest lie that's ever been put before the American public, ever. The nature of reality. The tape quality, again, is poor when it broadcasts on a television set. The nature of reality. Um, so, um, so, uh, so what were we talking about? Well, I was just going to... The gonna... glass frontier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looking yeah. out here from inside the box. Yeah, yeah. Looking out to all you people beyond glass. the glass frontier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we just wanted to, to clarify something here, okay? We are not just simply sitting inside the television. We are living, breathing human beings who right now are, are talking to you. And what you're seeing is merely a kind of, uh, kind of a, like a reflection of us through this technological marvel known as, as television. Now, you may be wondering how you can join us here in this great party that we're doing, that we're, we're experiencing. Well, all you have to do is go into the kitchen or into, the, into your shed and get a big hammer and bust the glass on the front of the TV and just climb right in with us and we'll have a little party here. So come on. Here's some sobering statistics. Did you know that 82% of adults in America watch television on the average day? and that the television is on seven hours a day in the average American household. 25% of Americans list television as their most eagerly anticipated daily activity. These stats are from 1985 and 86, by the way. And here's a whole slew of statistics to contemplate. When people get older, they tend to watch more television, not less, contrary to popular opinion. And uh, strangely enough, uh, women tend to watch more television than men. So, put that in your pipe and smoke it. So, um, you know, Bloomington, Indiana is a, is a pretty small place in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, we, we here at JVL Rocks, Rocks often forget just, just how, how, how uh, big the universe is, and how we're just kind of a small fish in a, in a big sea of, of uh, frightening and intimidating sharks. We sometimes forget that. But hey, we're just really just small, naive people, really, in a, in a great big menacing yeah. world. And you probably are, too, wherever you're sitting. But, but you know, that's something to be proud of. Youthful naivete is, is the essence of, of creativity. Yeah. The nature of reality, in fact. Look, it's the Jones family. Look, this is Larry Jones and Pam Jones and Sister Jones. And they're all going to church today. And this is the big asteroid that hit him. <laughs> and took the Jones's heads for thinking incorrect thoughts. Poor the Jones. nature of reality. So let the Joneses go around. They don't have any heads. But That's they make more effective citizens without their heads. Oh. Hey, One look, of our, our friends coming to visit us. Yeah, yeah. Was, Some, yeah. Someone was stupid enough to come out here in the rain with us. Yeah, I was just hey. wondering if you guys wanted some tea or something. Tea? Some tea, that'd be nice. Tea would be fine. Would you like some tea out there? If so, wait, wait bust your people. television and, and come on in. This this is our, our uh, housemate, roommate, person named uh, Worm. Worm. Also, I'm not moving over. <laughs> no, known by several different monikers, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, nobody ever did write in and, and, and actually enter the uh, date with Kelly contest. Yeah. So Worm. you probably all just thought that, well, somebody else would get it. Well, you still have a chance. So do it. P.O. Box 3241, a date with Kelly. Bloomington, Indiana, 47402, there on the end. God damn this fucking thing. Hey, Jay. Oh my god. Editor B here. I just wanted to talk to you about a very important subject. Um, what? Well, you see, Jay, a lot of people feel that television is just an aesthetically inferior substitute for real experience. 
for life itself, Jay. Well, what do you mean? Well, I don't understand. Uh, well, what I'm saying is that television allows people to experience vicariously things that they can never experience in real life. For example, true love and happiness and material wealth. Well, but that's not true. I mean, I mean, you and I experience those things, and we do that on television. No, no, no you see, Jay, television is a totally passive uh, uh -huh. medium in that the viewer just sits out, sits, veggies, and watches what goes on. There's no well, interactivity. They, they can't talk back to the television, Jay. Well, now, that's bullshit. I mean, we're talking right now. Look at this. We're having that kind of a conversation. Yes, well, obviously, this is impossible. This is, this is a contrivance. This never really happened. Well, but it's happening right now. I mean, I've got it on videotape. You've got it on videotape? Yeah. Don't you understand what I'm saying, Jay? Videotape is nothing but more television. And television is not real, Jay. Uh, n nothing is real but television. Come on. Well, if that was true, you could just turn the channel and stop listening to me. Well, I guess I'll just do that then. Fuck you. Well. <laughs> I win! Yay! I win over Editor B! We are one in the spirit. We are one in the low. We've got one in our butt crack, and it's really, really large. It is so very large that we were thinking it was in charge. And then she would eat it for the Lord, for the Lord. Yes, and then she would eat it for the Lord. We will walk with your butt crack. We will walk. Up your, your nose, we will walk with your butt crack. We will walk up your nose, and together we'll, we'll spread our underwear and dig our land. Yeah, then no, we are Christians by our butt cracks. A uh, butt cracks. No, we are Christians by our butt crack. Look, there is Wormy. She is laughing on the floor. She is laughing like an idiot, and she thinks she's winning more. Then she got her some toilet paper and a big old piece of snot, and it was some snot for the Lord, for the Lord. And she got a hard snot for the Lord. My hemorrhoids got some paper on it today. No, I'm not a part of this. <laughs> but they make more effective citizens without their heads. So, uh, I guess that brings us to the end of this episode of J and B on the Rocks, yes. the nature of reality. It's been hard to deal with some of these things, but nevertheless, it is real, and yeah. we wanted to, to remind you that even when the reality is unpleasant, you might as well take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. So, um, take a look at something else now, because we're leaving you. Goodbye.
That wasn't how it's supposed to end. <laughs> Wasn't it? Oh, I guess it did end that way. Yeah. So I guess it ended. Yeah.